welcome to today's show. My name is Brenda Bates, Medicine Woman, and this is Medicine Woman Reveal. We help you answer questions that are going on in your life. We help give you a general reading about why your life is projecting out the way it is. And with me I have today... Jen Tuffle, Medicine Woman. And... Scott Bates. The Apprentice. He's my husband. Um, he's learning along the way as the more that you participate as a teacher, not just a student, you learn how to learn twice and you learn to find to who you are. So it looks like we have a really good show about ready to give to you, like every day we do. So we're just going to jump right in. Okay, our first color is going to be area code 847. Hello. Hi. 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 How can I help you? Okay, my name's Jill. So do I just ask a question? If you have something on your mind, please do. Okay, I, my daughter's been friends with someone for, I don't know, seven years. And I've been really nice, done a lot for her. Um, you know, there really isn't anyone to play with but each other. I've done everything so they have a nice childhood. I'm just tired of it. This girl is walking all over me, taking advantage of me, doesn't care how anything affects me. I've had enough. I did talk to her mom yesterday. I don't know how clear I was. I have to be careful because moms are defensive. And how did the mom take it? Did she believe me? And how did it go when she talked to her daughter? And now what? Okay. When it comes to the, this kind of a question, there are so many variables from, from all parts. Now the main thing to understand is that when you're asking the question, it is your way that your life is showing up. Now there's a part okay. of you that there's a part of you that half expects that directness is the best and this is how you do things. Okay? Now, when you've okay. done things in the past where you've taught, you've told somebody directly, what did it turn out good or bad? You know, I'm just a nice person. I think they just blow me off. Okay, so that's what's going to happen in this case. What happens is that we already know what's going to happen, and usually we can predict it. Now, what we have to do is grow out of the thing that no longer serves us. You're being super nice, and now you're being directed. So what I'm going to ask your soul is, why is it necessary for this girl to walk all over you? And it's an old program from what I'm looking at. And it has to do with, you have to do the right thing. And uh, if you don't do the right thing, then you're shamed. And by, um, okay, so when you were growing up, uh, if you didn't do the right thing, what would happen to you? Was there consequences? Yeah. Okay. And, see, and what's happening is that that's your program. Um, you've learned, which you, what you need to unlearn, is that you don't have to be afraid. Your okay. little girl, the little girl inside of you, your three-year-old, learned a long time ago that I better figure this out or I'm going to get hurt real bad. Because yeah. the little girl inside doesn't ever want to um, bump up against that ugly, the, the, the negativity, the hurt, the pain, you will change your personality and behavior to fit the situation so that you can have a strategy that you'll be safe, okay? And so now, even though you chronologically aged, this program is still safe. No, no, no. It, it still serves you. See, you're still safe. But the other part of you is you've grown now to the point with, you know what? I don't have to do that. I don't have right. to. So that's the that's is why these these uh, people are showing up the way they do is because of that little part of yourself. Now I'm going to look a little further here. If she wanted to change it so these people she didn't have to draw these people in to help teach her this lesson, what would she do? What she, did she need to heal? Okay, so they're pointing to the energy of how people are direct. People just can be straight out say whatever they want, but you can't. Um, and even when you do say what you want, don't matter. Their words are more important than you. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. Because you know it this way, that's how you expect the energy to always show up. Is because it was the little girl inside of you that knew it. All right. So it's the experience that we have to create closure to. Um, okay. So you understand? I'm not blaming you. I'm telling you right, that there's a, okay, right. good, good, because there's a program in you that attracts these people, and that's the thing we want to stop, 
It's not that you now have I need to... to hear this, so keep going. Okay, and it's, see, and it's not the fact that you have to change your personality to fit their needs, which is what happened as a little kid to survive, but as an adult, you don't even have to go up to them and be strong and get a backbone. You know, you, it's great that you learn this, but the other found, the foundation is uh, issue is going to always make it so they win. So I'm I'm still looking for that piece that says that it wants to heal. Jen, draw some. Oh, you drew some cards. What do you got for her? Well, I got um, Saint Francis that says that you want to follow your heart, but what's standing in the way of that is the inability to be yourself. You know what's in your heart, right. but for whatever reason, you can't be yourself. Well, and, then, and then I got the um, the Web Weaver card, uh, which says that your create creations are far-reaching and have positive effects on the many. Every action, every thought, every word and deed is woven into the web of creation. When the web weaver appears as your ally, she grants you the way to others of like mind and intention and lets you know that you're not alone in your endeavors. All right, Scott, you got so, something intuitive. Okay, yeah, yeah, Jill, uh, you're always nice to everyone else. Now I think it's time for you to be nice to yourself by not letting others take advantage of you. It, it, it really is. And, and, just... and that's great advice. Now, let's make it true. Because we do have to have self-care before we have to do and help others all the time. Because of this three-year-old program, mm -hmm. her three-year-old has learned, how do I want to put it? It's like when I went to work every day and we got out at 9 o'clock at night. I, had, I used my mother's car because I was still young and I didn't have a car. My mother had really appreciated her car. Well, I got it at 9. It's a 10-minute drive. She wondered why I wasn't home by 9.10. Well, when you work in a, a drugstore and you have to count the money down, that takes time. You have to wait for everybody and then you have to follow the owner to the bank. So sometimes I wouldn't get home until almost 9.30. And boy, she would be angry every time I walked in the door. And she would just like, let me have it, just be so negative, be grumpy. And the only way that I could feel safe, I love my mother, my mother was not going to harm me. I just didn't like the negativity, because that's what made me feel unsafe. Was that I changed who I was. I would almost look around for a flaw, invent something, come in the door and just say, Oh my God, you should have seen how they treated me tonight. Blah, 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 blah. And that seemed to diffuse the situation. The only problem is, is it changed who I was, and I didn't want to become that person. So instead of changing your personality, you already know in a way you want you to, you know that you can stand up for yourself. That's not the problem. You know that you have a backbone. That's not the problem. The problem is, is that you are also a kinesthetic. And again, when I say problem, it doesn't mean this is an issue that you have to resolve. A kinesthetic needs to learn to fine tune how they live in their environment. And if you have ever gotten into an argument with somebody, all of a sudden it looks like you failed before you even begun, or they won no matter what, it's because you have the empathy part of yourself that can understand the situation on a bigger picture. And but see, that's what gets me in trouble. Exactly. And that's where I'm a very extreme kinesthetic, but I had to learn to fine-tune myself based on the fact that when I was little, I did the same thing you did. I was making sure everybody was um, happy at the cost of yourself. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That, I can understand that. That's how I was growing up. And when I was younger and had all my roommates over there, I would have thought, I'll be nice and I'll let all these guys stay at the house and I give them like dirt cheap rent and all that. And they took advantage of it. You know, yes. I, I didn't realize till later years, I'm thinking, geez, they just kind of used me. And what it is is that we want to keep this, this loving part of ourselves. Why should we have to give it up just because they don't want to be loving? Well, we don't have to give it up, trust me. I have learned, well, by using healing tools, I have learned to create closure to things, and I stopped attracting these people in my space, and I learned to stay authentic. So this is what we're going to do. One time session usually isn't enough, but if you keep calling back in and we keep working on the issue, you're, what's going to happen is we're going to create closure to the issues in the past. We're going to help that little girl survive without having to lose herself. And what happens is that when you reclaim your energy, you become very much uh, healthier and stronger within who you are, and you can stop attracting these people. So this is what I'm looking for, is the best way to, he to help you. Okay, Jen, tell her about Hope Therapy while, or where to go and all that while I'm looking for the spot. Okay, so our website is www 
M W Reveal. It's M W for Medicine Women Reveal. M W Reveal dot com. And when you get to our homepage on the left side, you'll see our menu. You go down to Healing Tools. You click on Healing Tools, and a little pop-up window or another menu comes up, and you go to Hope Therapy. And then there's a video to watch, a YouTube of Brenda explaining uh, the story and how to do it and where, what the pulse points are and acupressure points and that kind of thing. It's got a whole video on how to explain that. Okay, so what we're going to do is one of the things is, is that um, to help you overall is that in the middle of your palm is a, just a palm, but it also represents that egg that protects us from people. Okay. And one of the things that I want to make sure you understand is that you can put your finger on either palm at any point, any time. You just put it in the palm. When you feel like you have to go into the self-correction process. Now, it's not that you're getting beaten to go in the self-correction process. That helped, trust me, but they, it, to keep you alive. But what happens is now that you're older... It's, it becomes a, it became such a habit. You got to do it right. You got to go in the self correction process all the time, and so, oh, I better be nice. Oh, I'll let that slide. You need to start catching yourself when you do this. Okay, it doesn't mean when you heal this away or create closure that you're going to become a mean person. It just means that you're going to become a more happier, healthier person because you won't be having these programs running. Okay, so. What you end up doing is having to go into what others, what you, the picture you painted for yourself. Oh, I need to do this. I have to correct myself. This is, you know, she's just, you, get, you give everybody excuses, and that's what you're going to focus on, how you give everybody excuses. They don't know better. They're, you know, they're going to be mean anyway. You know, I, 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 I'm a bigger person. I, I, I should be doing this. This is the right thing to do. And those are great things to say. Yes and no, but what happens is it stuck, it's stuck in your program so that you're the one that suffers. You with me so far? Okay, so what you're going to end up doing, because this has uh, been so huge and followed you all your life, we have to take, we can't go to the, bo the bottom of the foundation or in the middle of the cake. We have to actually take the frosting. We have to go on top, and this is what you see. It's, it's what's called dogma. Day in and day out, it's the same story. Okay, it's the same crap, different day. And it robs you of your joy because you have to keep yourself protected and make sure that, you know, no one's going to hurt you and you're not going to hurt yourself. So you're going to end up holding L3S. L is the left wrist. And the third position, you'll notice when you watch the video that you take three fingers. And, it'll, and the third finger is the one that's closest to the elbow. And then you're going to put your thumb and take your fingers away. And your thumb your, your thumb's going to go in that third position. And you're going to hold soft. You're not going to hold deep. So L3S, left, third, soft. And then your pointer finger is going to go in the palm. What you're going to think about is how you're just really going to dive into how when something bad happens, same crap, different day, immediately grab this point and just put it on a scale from 0 to 10 going, oh my gosh. You know it so well that now it's really, really draining you, depleting you, and robbing you of your life force. Okay? Yeah. And then what's also going to happen is notice how you have to give them excuses. Oh, that's just them. And like I said, when you feel like you have to correct yourself because you, at least you were aware that, you know, you don't... You, you don't care whether it's right or wrong. You, you, what you want is happiness. You want it to balance. You want it to get along. And there's again, we're not taking those away from you. We're helping you clear out the crap, throwing the baby out with the bathwater. We're throwing the crap out and keeping the baby. We're going to keep the positive stuff, and we're going to do away with the negative stuff, okay? Okay. So you're going to come back, and you're going to listen to the archives later. And we even put them up on videos, too, on our wall. Where did she go for that if she wanted to watch it? You, if you go to YouTube, the website YouTube, and you yeah. and you look for the um, channel Medicine Women Reveal. And it's all one word. One right, so you go thing. to YouTube.com and then forward slash Medicine Women Reveal, which takes you to uh, the videos of like the behind the scenes and that kind of thing, so you can find your segment. Because some people are more visual than they are listening, 
and so that's why we decided to put it up on video. But get the gems, re-listen to it, and notice what the topic is. Notice how you're familiar. It's the familiarity, seeing yourself in the story, and that's the, that's what, how, what you need to heal out. It's this, put on the scale from 0 to 10, 10 being, oh my god, yes, I could write the book. And then give it a color. Don't have to worry about the color being right or wrong. It's the color that you're relating to. So it's always going to be the correct answer for you. And then you just go in that position, and you'll notice how you put your hand in your forehead and your hairline, and then just sit there and heal. Get it down. When you when all of a sudden you can't you can't think about it anymore, it don't feel the same way. Then you then you're like, hmm, okay, it must be gone. And you and you try to put it on the scale, and it don't feel like nothing's there. That's okay. We want it down to zero. What's going to happen is, is that you got to give your body time to acclimate. It takes time to reset. Right. And then the universe will reset for you, which is the entanglement cords to other people, places, and things. So when you're ready, if there's another layer to it, it'll pop up and you're like, oh my god, there it is. Immediately go yeah. back to L3S, put your hand on your forehead, and put on the scale and give it a color and do it again. And you keep doing it until there's nothing left and the universe stops showing you, okay? Okay. All right. Keep us posted, okay? Stay blessed. Thank you so much. That was really helpful, and it was things that I needed to hear. All awesome. right. Thank you, dear. Stay blessed. Take care. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so we'll go right to the next one. Oh, wait. Do you want to we take got, a little break? we got three callers waiting. We're going to take them in order. So if you're, All right. If you're waiting, please wait. Yeah, for let's, let's, let's do next? one. We're going to do area code 321 before we take a break, and then we'll take a break after that. Okay. Sounds good. You're on the air, area code 321. Yes, how are you doing? Oh, great. good. How are you? I'm great. This is uh, Don. How can we help you? Yes, I just wanted a general reading. All righty. All righty. So let me just take a second. Um, I think you need to draw some cards, Scott, for him. Now, so the word honor and dishonor keeps popping up in my head. Do you know what that means? Uh, yeah, sort of. Okay. Let me just keep looking because they said honor and dishonor. You feel, you know how to honor others, but then one of the things you notice is a, that people dishonor you. Does this make sense? Yeah. And, and, and you, you know, you're not hurt by it a lot because you're a strong individual, but there's a part of you that feels like, wow, it's like, it doesn't matter how nice or how what I'm doing, I still see people just don't think I'm doing it correctly, or they dishonor me, they don't pay it forward, they don't, and it's not that you have all these rules and beliefs, it's just there's a part of you that, that learned as a child that you don't receive love the same way like everybody else does, and that's part of you that goes into a yearning state. We can heal this, but let's get the, let Scott um, has Okay, read. I drew a card called <laughs> Making a Choice. It says, you are faced with a dilemma or a fork in the road and must make a conscious choice regarding the next right action. <clears throat> Whatever that choice is, you must take responsibility for it, yet you need to be afraid. You may not have all the answers right now because the way ahead can be known or can't be known until you embarked and traveled a few steps. Trust your intuition. Ask for a sign from spirit and you will be led to the right path. If you remain conscious and aware, your choice will be the right one at this time. Life is always about learning. Success lies in choosing consciously, guided by intuition and spirit. And what he said was that there's a part of you that knows how you want to do it correctly, how you want to do it right, but you go into self-contrary. You contradict yourself. And there must be a process of how, like when you're about ready to make a choice, do you go through a lot of thinking before you get to the right choice? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they're saying that that's what creates you a great dilemma. It creates you to have a great dilemma. And that's where all of a sudden they're saying who dishonors you the most is yourself. Because you have like this checklist list of who, what you're supposed to do, how you're supposed to be, who you're supposed to live it up to. And you end up kind of, I don't want to say shooting yourself in the foot, because in the long run, you end up liking what you do, but in, at first it's like, okay, I'm doing this for whom? That's what I want you to understand, is who you're doing it for yourself. The way I ask myself this question is, is that my heart is into doing, and if my heart is not into doing that question, or that, that I'm asking myself, then I say, I have the self-esteem to do this. And if it feels like I don't have the self-esteem, 
then I have to question whether or not am I doing it for myself or am I doing it for others. And that's, okay, Jen, I hear you need to help you next. Okay, so I picked cards, uh, they're from the deck Wisdom of the Hidden Realms by Colette Baron reed and I got the Lady of Lightning, and as an ally, the Lady of Lightning brings powerful forces of change into your life. She tells you to expect a sudden shift in your circumstances. Perhaps a situation you weren't anticipating arises and offers you the opportunity of a lifetime, or a series of aha moments culminates in a, in a pivotal flash of insight causing everything to change just like that. And then what's interesting is I got the River Queen who says she flows into your life as an ally to remind you about the concept of allowing and the law of non-attachment. Remember that all rivers come from the mountains and run to the sea to be absorbed by the larger body of water. There the liquid evaporates into clouds that rain on the mountains to continue an endless cycle of fluidity. So it sounds like a change needs to take place in your life, but that you need to understand the reaction that you have to the process of change. Um, that you need to make a change, but perhaps not react the same way or respond the same way that you have in the past. So basically in the past, when he's made a decision, he's gone into the self-contrary, the, the self-denigrating, and then... <sighs> Okay, so you're with us so far in what we're saying? Yes, I am. Yes. Okay, so I, you know, again, I'm a healer first and foremost, and one of the things is, is we can create closure to these particular patterns. And the main thing that they want you to uh, pay attention to is that you've got a very strong will, you're willing to love yourself, you're willing to help others, and that's great, but it actually, you paralyze yourself when it comes to making major decisions for yourself. And yeah, it's okay to seek out ad advice from others, but it goes back to dishonor. Now give me just a second so I can figure this out. If you end up making the wrong decision, is was there usually consequences that happened to you when you were little that depleted you? Uh, no, not, not that I can think of. Okay, so... If you made the, if you were going, if you didn't make the correct decision, what bad things would occur? Uh, punishment. Okay. You know, you know, just normal parent stuff. Yeah, just, but it ought, to a child, any type of punishment is, 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 means that there's love taken away. And, uh, what we don't realize is that we have a certain amount of primal needs and um, sometimes the punishment or the taking away the love deprives those primal needs to develop. And all we're saying is that how you know what it feels like when you don't make the right decision, you dishonored them, but then you would rather dishonor yourself first than to hurt others. Is that true? Absolutely. Okay, now this is what your soul wants you to know. You have to heal that. You can you got to heal away the one thing that built up to you when you were little. Because they said you learned it about one years old. We're not blaming anybody. This is your pattern of your soul. It doesn't matter what parents you would have had. This all stuff would have came forward. So at one years old, you knew what it felt like to... You didn't do it. You watched it happen. Somebody dishonored somebody. And you felt the person that it happened to, the pain. Like for instance, let's say something happened with your mom and dad and let's say your dad dishonors your mother by doing something that could hurt. Does this make sense? Yeah. And what happens is that you as a child, because we're so good at uh, feeling and knowing energy as kids, you probably felt your mother being into an extreme amount of uh, pain and feeling dishonored and not loved. And so you wrote it down in your little manual for living, oh my gosh, I know what that is. So now you probably said to yourself, and could have said to yourself, because we make decisions at that age, I'm never going to do that. Because I don't want I don't want to hurt my mother. I'll never do that. Do you understand? Yes. Yeah. And because when you make those deep decisions at that age, you haven't developed that other part of your brain. Yes, it's great that we don't want to hurt others, but when we start carrying that into our life, becomes it no longer serves us. 
Right, Jen? Right, because you'd rather take on the pain than the other person. Exactly. Or, um, oh, there's something, it's not, there's the phrase, cut off your nose to spite the face, but it's like, but he's like but a it, hero. But, 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 but not in the same way that that phrase is typically used. But yeah, but you're going to do it to yourself before it's done to others. Because he, I feel like he carries the hero card. He cares. And he sees people in pain, or he feels people in pain. And so he wants to make sure he didn't cause it. And then, but what happens is that when it comes to making decisions about his life, he... His little self goes back going, oh my God, if I do this, it could hurt my mother or it could hurt, you know, because I, uh, how do I want to put it? Well, you guys are so on point. You, do you want, okay, good. You understand what we're saying. Well, then what I need you to heal, honey. You're so on point that today alone, that's what I was talking about. Well, I'm going to tell you guys are so on point. Thank you. I was just contemplating on this earlier today. And this is one of the things that, that in me that I just wanted to change. How do I change it? Then that's a great question. And this is what we're going to tell you to do. Jen, tell them where to go to get help therapy. Okay, so our website is www.mwreveal.com. And that's M for medicine, W for women, reveal. mwreveal.com. On the left side of our homepage is a menu. Go to Healing Tools and then go to Hope Therapy. And when you get done watching the video, then I want you to hold L3S. L is in left, 3 is in the third position on the wrist. And you're going to put your thumb there. And your thumb is going to lay there soft. And you're going to notice how this decision in your world, this is a topic you're going to, you're going to think and feel, how all of a sudden it paralyzes you, you can't move. You can't go in the direction you want, but you don't want to go in the direction you don't want. And literally, you just... Because you want to experience things in life, but it's like every single decision revolves around this to the point where you're stopping life from <coughs> happening to yourself. Decisions, move, career, relationships, money, everything hinges upon the decision of dishonoring yourself because it may <coughs> cause other people pain. And what you're going to focus on, too, even more, is when you put your finger in the middle of your palm, again, you'll watch the video, I want you to notice how all of a sudden it feels like your strength is just being drained out of you, when, especially when you're going to make the decision that says yes for yourself when you know others will be saying no to you. And literally feel how it just drains you. You're going to focus on that, give it, put it on the scale from 0 to 10. That means the topic you're going to put on the scale, scale from 0 to 10. And then you're going to put how you feel mortified and how you feel drained and how you, oh my gosh, just put all that and then what you're going to do is you're going to just think and feel and that's what that hope therapy does is that let the, the where your hands go, let it help you. All you have to do is think and feel and eventually the self-talk will shut up, the feeling will change and just like I told the last caller, you know, when it feels like it's gone, if it's just a little bit there, keep healing. But if it feels like it's gone, get up because the universe is going to show you if there's any more entanglement cords out there. And you'll either have a phone call or a yeah, TV or something. Pay attention there. to your dreams. Everything. And then as soon as you feel that, <gasps> that feels familiar about this, go back to L3S. Put what just happened to you, which is what we call a fresh experience, put it on the scale from 0 to 10 and then heal that down. It'll go much quicker. And sometimes when they are the fresh experience, it feels like it's going to take forever. But hang in there. Eventually that, your body will change. Okay? Yeah. All right, so keep how us posted. Huh? Oh, the how long? Well, that's the thing. Because if you have, if this is so huge, like I have had some, is I put my hand on my hair, my, or my forehead and my hairline, so I had some that last like five minutes to just completely disappear because that means acute. But if you're so used to doing it, it'll be chronic. And sometimes it can take up to 10 minutes, sometimes up to 20. Um, but then usually when those other little ones pop up, they go quick. Because what you're doing is you're telling your brain, stop creating that reality. It doesn't need to create that reality anymore. So you're diffusing it. So it can be very quick. 
Usually, Jen, he, he, what will he see if he, he heals this? What usually will he see? Um, the people all of a sudden start talking to you differently, or you hear people talk to you differently. Um, situations that were so familiar, all of a sudden you may say, hey, well, I'm used to so-and-so acting this way, and they're not. That's part of the healing, and that's okay. It's a, especially when it's a positive shift, that it's, that it's a good thing that they're not behaving in the way that they have. So what's going to happen is you're going to make sure you witness that. Tell yourself, write it down so you don't think, oh my God, later on, oh, that didn't work. I've had people carry their issues for years, up to 45, 50 years, and so then they sit down and have a session with me 10 minutes later, and then all of a sudden we'll be talking, they'll go, I never had that issue, what are you talking about? And you need to understand when you shift, because... It's important to realize who you were, but all you're doing is preserving all the positive learnings and creating closure to stuff that no longer serves. You understand, it served you as a kid, but not now. And literally, you'll get your energy back, and when, when an opportunity where you're going to have to make decisions again, you will actually think about them differently. You, you may need a soul, soul coach. That's what Jen and I are. You can check out our website, and you see how much we cost. If you want to set up a session, go ahead and call in and we'll set up an appointment. But do your best, you know, you can do, you can, I'm trying to teach people that you can heal yourself, you know, but we are also here to help you with the complicated ones, okay? Yes, what's the website again? www.mwreveal.com Under which section? When you, when you go to the front page, there on the left there's the menu, go to Healing Tools. And when you click on Healing Tools, another little menu pops up and go to Hope Therapy. Hope Therapy. Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Stay blessed, yeah, dear. There's something that's been uh, keeping me down for, uh, I, I, I don't even remember. From what I know, one years old. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long time. All right. Happy healing, sweetie. Yeah. Call back. And area code three four seven, you're on the air. With Brenda, Jen, and Scott. Hello. Area code three four seven, you're on the air with us. Can you hear us now? Um, shoot. Well, what we're going to do is her. we're just going to pause. We'll come Never back. Heard. Don't hang up. We'll come, uh, back. we'll come back to you. Okay. Why is? I don't know. Did Looks you like pick it up? Are we, are we online still? Yeah. There we go. Okay. Okay, so again. take three. Okay, okay, try one more time for three, four, seven. Because we did it. I did it at the same time. Okay, we got the mic up for three, four, seven. You're on the air. Shoot, we can't hear you, hon. Okay, well. Okay, we'll go to the next caller, we'll and then we'll come back. We'll check you after this, okay? okay. And maybe they could have went to the bathroom too, because we said we'd be right back. Yeah, we took a. We we only we took, took a short break. We took a real short break. Okay, so now we're gonna go to area code three three six. Hello. Uh, hello. Hi. How can we help you? Yes. Hi. Yes. Um, I'm calling in for a general reading. Yes. Myself, uh, today. All right. Give us just a second. I see pearls. I don't understand what pearls are, but I see pearls. Hmm. Wisdom or jewelry? Well, don't throw the pearls before the swine. What's that mean, Jen? Uh, oh, yeah, don't cast your pearls. Don't throw all your um, beautiful, vulnerable parts to the people who are not going to receive it. Exactly. So mm. you, you'll end up getting hurt doing that. Well, there, there is a funny thing I saw on Facebook, and you have to pardon my French, but there's a, there was, you know, how they throw all the phrases and the pictures and that kind of thing. The memes, yes. The memes. And they said, this one said, before you diagnose yourself um, with a mental illness or low self-esteem, make sure that you're just not hanging out with a whole bunch of a-holes. <laughs> so, so... It's just taking a look, and re and you always say consider the source. Right. I noticed one thing, like when you were growing up, Jen, you the people that you had in your world were mean to you, but yet you didn't let go of them. Um, it's like there's a part of you that knew you needed to learn how to uh, be, cope, and 
So, you know, you have to be strong in that manner. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right. I, I mean, all my, <laughs> um, I just had early programming this, um, through family life and that kind of thing that you just get used to the people who are going to insult you and throw you down and that kind of thing, and that's just how people are. So I wouldn't even, I don't even know if I would know if people were nice um, or that there were nice people out there because I was just so used to that kind of conditioning. Well, the one word that comes up is depletes. She feels depleted. She, it's, it's like, um, I feel like you could have me, um, physical strength, but some mental strength. It's just like, you get tired. And mm -hmm. do you feel like you um, have to, or who, okay, when you have people in the world, do you feel like they're just constantly talking? Yes. Okay, and there's a, there's a part of you that's mentally tired of listening. Um, it's not mm -hmm. that you're trying to be rude or anything, and it, you don't, it's not that you don't care, but it's actually draining. And it, would ta it feels like it would just take so much effort to put your voice into the conversation that it's almost worth it to just not put forth that effort. And I feel mm -hmm. like you're a little kid that didn't know when to butt in to the adult conversation to say, I have to pee, or can I have a cookie, or I'm hungry, or can I play? because of the manners that, you know, you're supposed to stand there and wait until they acknowledge you to say, oh, do you need something? Um, okay, so I'm going to look at this. And what happens is that there's a part of you that your soul wants you to learn, and they want you to start to build your self-esteem. And you chronologically age to the point where, okay, I'm going to be a stronger woman, I'm going to do this, I'm going to be <coughs> going to have a backbone, I'm going to insert myself, and it's just so tiring. Um, does that sound about right? Yes, it does. And they're saying that one of the things that robbed you of your strength was other people's wounded pride. Mm. And you It's learned, almost like, so that, that's what the conversation was about. Wounded pride, that's what everybody's talking about, is that woundology and the complaining and the bitching and moaning, and that's a lot of what wounded pride is, right? Oh, yes. And then that, that's the, that, 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 and that's okay. what I feel like I'm supposed to be doing, because she's not even getting her voice into the... Yeah. All right, so I'm going to ask you, does it feel like what we're saying is, is uh, familiar to you? Yes, it does. Very much familiar. Yes. Okay. Now, what I'm going to notice or tell you about is that you learned this about two years old and in this case you didn't have punishment it's just that you could not be in sync or relate to people you did your best but you knew there's a part of you that you didn't it's not that you didn't care you just didn't have any desires and interests it's like let's say you hung with people like sports and you didn't like sports but yet you mm -hmm. that's all that was available and because of this, they're saying now it's about time that you call in the people that are like-minded. On our website, there's a golden lasso. It's a healing tool that helps you use the golden lasso to bring to you like-minded people. That's what I would tell you to bring in. Like-minded in this case is that you're going to start discovering who you are, what your likes are. And that vulnerable part of yourself that we were talking about at the very beginning of casting the pearls before a swine. It's those parts that, that's the part that I've been going through since um, my divorce is actually reclaiming the parts of myself that I actually found interesting um, or that I couldn't like before because it's almost like I didn't have permission because I had to fit into his world. And so now it's kind of like, you know, I like comic stuff. I don't have to like everything about it, but it's kind of fun and enjoyable and science. You well, know, I'm, I'm discovering. Let's look at it this way: the parts. when you and your husband were together, you were two great people. But when you came together, it looks like it could clash. Oil Nothing, and water. Nothing's wrong with either one of you. It's just that you weren't in sync. You 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 took on what you thought you were supposed to have because that's what you knew when you were growing up. Yes. And your attracting factor of attracting that type of person in was what you knew. That's what you're changing now, is reclaiming your pieces, as well as learning that you can heal the attracting factor so you don't have to bring that type of people in. So I would tell you also to grab the golden lesson. Mm -hmm. you, you, there's a part of you that you're ready to discover yourself, and yeah. you consider the source simply means when you're with the people, 
do I really have to sit here and take this? You know, and do I really have to sit here and listen to this? No, they want you to adventure out and the gold lasso will start bringing people to you. It'll start bringing your likes to you. You'll end up starting to, to uh, discover yourself. There's, there's one hitch that I'm looking at and that is, is that you, I don't know if you, they're using this word and please bear with me, it may not be true, but they're saying that you were forced to learn what humility was. Can we take that again? <clears throat> you were forced to learn what humility was. Yeah. And they're saying yeah. that that actually is what causes you to keep repeating this pattern. We're going to preserve the positive learnings of what humility is, mm -hmm. but all of the other people's way of how they used humility worked for them, but how you're supposed to do humility, remember it's their programs. We want you to just focus on how you have to know this word, be this word, but, but you never got to define the word. Everybody else defined it for you and told you this is who you're supposed to be as a kid. And there's a part of you that's going, oh my God, I just want a little bit of breather room for me. So mm -hmm. what if I like this and they don't? Okay. And so I want you to define what humility is. How can okay. she do that, Jen? What do I usually tell people? So uh, you've got your own definition in your head probably about what that word is. But then it's time to go to the dictionary. And go to sev several different versions of the dictionary. Everybody who's created the dictionary has their own agenda and to what mm -hmm. proper vernacular is. Go to the thesaurus and then listen. Say to the universe, hey, I want to find out about this. And all of a sudden you'll start seeing, hearing it in maybe radio, on the radio or on TV shows or it starts coming in through emails or in your dreams or that sort of thing. So you're going to start really defining and redefining. I can smell and I'm not even smelling it. I'm, I'm putting oils on if you're wondering. I balance myself so, with the chakra oils. So you go through and you, you go through the defining and redefining process. And it's so important to understand also how your family and your friends define what this is. And sometimes what shocked me the most is when I was defining certain words, some people did not have an answer. But yet they were telling me that I had to behave this way. And they didn't even have one for themselves. And that was usually the biggest shocker, was learning about my family and friends. And yet they're preaching it, but not walking it. And here you are doing everything you can to walk it. And then you realize, what? This doesn't apply to you too? So when you get there, and when you get to define and start to break this up, then what I want you to do is that I want you to hold R3S. I want you to do hope therapy. I want you to hold the right wrist in the third position and hold it soft with your thumb. What's going to happen is you're, you're going to enter a state of transition. If you don't usually hold these points, you'll go in a state of shock to some degree. And then you'll get stuck. And then you'll go into, what the hell? I can't figure this out. And everything seems to be up and down. Nothing seems straight. So when you start to do this transition, I would like you to, to hold R3S every time you're going, oh my gosh, really? Now there's a little difference between shock and epiphanies. And what is that, Jen? So an epiphany is the aha moment. You, all of a sudden, when maybe I'm using the example of going through this defining humility, or and, and all of a sudden the people around you don't even know what it is, but like Brenda said, they're going to tell you how to act, and you're like, oh, and it's like, oh, that's an aha moment. That's an epiphany mm -hmm. kind of thing. But a shock is like somebody does something, and you're like, I didn't, you just can't believe it. Can't believe that somebody you can't would do process that to this. You. See, and you just literally can't process this, and that's why I want you to hold R3S, is because when this was presented to you, you went into shock, and then you couldn't process it, and then you had to figure out how to function from that point forward. So you understand what we want you to do is to go use hope therapy. Do you know where to go to get the tools? No, I don't. All right, Jen. Our website, www.mwreveal.com. And that's M as in medicine, W as uh -huh. in women, reveal, mwreveal.com. And on our homepage, you're going to see on the left side a menu, and you go to healing tools, and you uh -huh. click on that, and another little menu pops up, and she just explained what hope therapy was, but she also told you about the golden lasso, but you can also look at the other healing tools as well, but it's going to be on... The left side, click on healing tools and you'll get to the menu of all the different things we offer.
okay? okay. And if you can't do it I'm alone, ready. then you give us a call and then set up an appointment, okay, yeah. if, if you need help. All right. And all our contact, you're, you're very welcome, all our contact information is on our website. But keep us posted and please heal because that will help yes. you out tremendously and so just keep us posted, okay? Oh, yeah, thank you very much. All right, stay Okay, blessed. thanks for calling. Bye-bye. Okay. We're going to go back to area code 347. And hopefully this time, 347, are you there? Hello? Area code 347, you're on the air. Turn. They must be able to hear us to some degree, hopefully, because if they would, if not, they would have hung up. Right. So we'll c keep coming back. We'll keep uh, maybe call back in. We, Jen, write their number down so that when it comes back in, we know that they um, are next in line. If you are listening to us, some reason we can't. Do you have your thing on mute? Um, maybe unmute it, and or call back in. Maybe it'll reset itself so we can actually hear you. But uh, number three four area code three four seven. Five six four. We will be back, and um, you just hang up, call back, or whatever. If you if you want to listen, if you want to um, communicate with us, or if, they could have hit the yellow or they could have hit one <coughs> by accident, and they didn't really want to ask the question. I don't know, but we'll check. Okay, so now we're going to take a Skype caller. Next in line. Next in line. You're on the air with Brenda, Jen, and Scott. Okay, hello. Miss Skype caller. And I'm just learning and growing and appreciating the the uh, wisdom that is overflowing. How are you all doing today? All three of you. We're great. great. <laughs> How are you? I'm wonderful. Full of creativity. Sitting, sitting in my field, creating, bringing forth a beautiful goddess. Excellent. Excellent. So, so what can we do for you, sweetie? I'm sure there's something. You're always <laughs> capable um, of a good hand when I'm in your company. Oh, wonderful. If you would just pull a card for me and see what that brings. Well, Ra's energy is very strong with you right now. And he wants, he wants, oh, okay. He wants you to work on embarrassed. Um, embarrassed, uh, the little things. Not the big thing, but the little things. Um, one of the things the, that Ra's showing me is that you would do something, you trained yourself as an adult that this is not embarrassing. So you don't see it consciously as an embarrassment. But if you listen, you will start to notice that your three-year-old self is still feeling like it's not being heard by, you know, he wants to hide because it's embarrassed. But it... What does embarrassed mean to you, sweetheart? Shame. Okay. It's like getting caught and you're like, oh my God. And then usually when you get embarrassed, they say the best way to do it is to walk back out in front of the people that you got embarrassed by and show them, show them by holding your head held high. And now, the best, um, the best revenge is success. True. And that feels like that would be going back in front of those people and saying, ah. Oh, so you I learned do it. you learned to overcome it, and that's great, but the little girl inside of you is still suffering to a little bit because this, it creates low self-esteem in her, which causes um, you to, as the adult, to stump you, create, create situations where it looks like it's going to go well, and all of a sudden it changes, changes direction. Does that make sense? Um, that, I have known that to be that way, and that's how I so did. Shoot, Skype keeps kick, um, cutting you out, dear. Well, they're saying that. Sabotage, so to speak. Okay, let me ask. Yes, it is to some degree. Yes, like self sabotage. Um, but that what they want you to know is how you feel embarrassed for others. You know what embarrassment means for you, but you, you, it's like you feel other people's embarrassment. It's almost like as a healer you would want to take that on because you don't want them to experience that negative thing. And since you're used to it, you know what it's like, it's almost like you're willing to take that on. Well, I do as a teacher myself. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. show people, no, you don't have to be embarrassed. I mean, I will, when I first did the video, I said, I said, look, you don't have to be embarrassed. I went out with no makeup, no nothing, my hair was a mess. I, it doesn't matter. That's not me. What me. What's me is inside, and it's about how my quality of how I believe in myself. 
And yes, yeah, so you know other people's embarrassment. But here's the thing. <clears throat> they want you to upgrade your RTJP, which is the right temporal junction parietal lobe. And this job is to think only what other people think. And that is, they want you to notice how you think other people think, how awkward it is, um, your inconvenience. And so by, being, by thinking what other people think, it actually stops you from stepping up to your greatness. Like when uh, Jen gets up in the morning, I can feel her program that she thinks, she, first she cuts herself down, like, oh my gosh, maybe I slept in too long, or I'm not doing something right, and she's waiting for someone to cut her down. Now, this is her old program. Surprise, Jen, this is what I learned about you this morning. They made me write it down. <laughs> right, yeah, that's not my 39-year-old no. program. That's my little kid program. I mean, she didn't, I, I know she is not consciously aware of this, but I, as she, she got up, I could feel her going, oh my gosh. Okay, I, I, she, first thing she did was judge herself. And then she's thinking about how I would then treat her. But then, usually it's not me, it's usually the, old, the people that you had in your past, like your mother, your sister, and everybody else, mm -hmm. you know. And this just pops up. And what they're saying is that that RTJP, you're going to have to catch yourself when you I don't you're... know if you can hear me, but I can't hear you all. All right, thank you for hanging in there. I'm not going back on blog talk. Um, I mean, on, on, on Skype. Skype. So what's going to happen is, is that I've got, I've got the phone. Hopefully you all can hear me. And we're going to go put uh, the Skype um, phone number again. And then we, we will continue from there. So let's see. Opulence, are you there? I am here. Woo! All right. Amen. That and thank you, for the, thank you for giving us the first message of um, yes. the no sound. So we're going to say that that would maybe perhaps be a clue for her. It is. It's about what happens when um, you're resetting who you are. Sometimes there is a glitch or something's out of sync. And do you have the self-confidence to just rise above it? And you have. Now, I want to go back to that RTJP. And what happens and is to think what other people think. So do you understand what I mean by that? Her mic, she's gone. What? Now she got kicked. Okay, that's okay. I'm going to do this. I'm going. To have, that's a big, big clue. Let's quickly draw a card, Scott. Or actually, okay. Let's yeah. see if this is her. That's learning to come together card. Hello. Hi. Okay, we're gonna try this again. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, is that somebody different? Hello, is this opulence? Okay, so now it's, it didn't even sound like her tone. Okay, so now people aren't recognizing. So when you're resetting, when you've gone through major healing, that's what we talk about with hope therapy, different meridian tapping, all the different kinds of healing, you're resetting yourself. People aren't going to be able, like one of the biggest things was when I was working on my sister's stuff, went to a family reunion, she couldn't push those usual trigger buttons. Yeah. She didn't know what to do because she couldn't trigger me in the same way that she had before. People don't know what to do. They don't. <laughs> you're resetting. It's like the computer. It's like anything electronic. You're resetting yourself. Okay. But that RTJP is one of the things is, is that... Um, let me ask you, uh, they're showing me something, and they're showing me like a wound from the past. Now, I don't know if it's yours, or if it's your culture, um, if it's the race, or if it's uh, the gender. I'm not sure which code I'm looking at, but the word wraps around is hate. And it sets in the heart meridian. Have you ever been, did any, have anybody ever have contempt or hate for any of those reasons? For the color of your skin, the race that you are, the gender that you are, or your beliefs that you have, or that what you were taught about yourself. For sure, my gender, because we all fall victim to that as feminized people. And then there's the race, you know, and the I have 
Okay. All right, so the two that you mentioned, um, notice how you know and put it on a scale. What's going to happen is, is that you, because you, are, you understand raw energy, you understand that you don't have to fuel that consciousness anymore, which means we're going to help you unplug from that matrix. Okay? The two things that are holding you in that old matrix and is about being a woman, and you said, what would she say, her, um, the culture? Mm -hmm. Yeah, embracing your culture, yes. Okay, <clears throat> because the feminine energy that's coming in, that Sophie energy coming in, it's about learning the self-love. Jesus was about that Christ consciousness and that, um, that, that consciousness, and we're taking and changing it. And the Sophia is helping us 